image that you see on the screen right now is of no ordinary man. He is Russell Buffalino. This name may not ring a bell in every household, but within the concealed world of organized crime, he was a mastermind of immense influence and power. Born in 1903 in Metadoro, Sicily, his life unfolded like a suspenseful narrative, a story of intrigue and intimidation. From his mysterious role in the mystery of Jimmy Hoffa's disappearance to orchestrating covert operations, Buffalino's story is one with many twists and turns. But what are they really? Russell Buffalino's journey began in the small town of Matadoro, Sicily, where he was born to Angelo Buffalino and Cristina Bocelleri in 1903. At the age of two months, he embarked on a transatlantic journey to the United States with his family as his father sought opportunities in the coal mining industry in Pittston, Pennsylvania. However, tragedy struck when his father perished in a mining accident shortly after their arrival. The Buffalino family returned to Sicily, but would soon make a second voyage to the United States in 1906. Four years later, Russell's mother met a similar fate, leaving young Rosario, as he was known at the time, an orphan. By 1914, at the tender age of 11, he was back in Pittston, Pennsylvania, where he would come of age. In his teenage years, Russell became skilled in auto repair, but his true occupation was a far cry from this legitimate trade. He delved into the world of small-time theft, selling stolen goods, hijacking, and various other criminal activities that characterized the era of prohibition and the burgeoning American underworld. His criminal exploits and growing reputation for resourcefulness eventually brought him to the attention of John Montana, an underboss for Stefano Magadino, the head of the Buffalo crime family. Magadino, also Sicilian by origin, had established a powerful presence in the criminal underworld. He had transitioned from his homeland and become a prominent figure within the Castellamarisi clan, eventually relocating to Buffalo, New York in 1921. There, he took over the family reigns when Jessup Di Carlo passed away in 1922. By 1930, Magadino's rule was unchallenged, making him one of the most influential figures in American organized crime. Russell's close association with Mangadino granted him access to a world of criminal knowledge and influence, positioning him as a valuable asset within the family. In 1928, Russell married Caroline Chandra, whose family also hailed from Matadoro, Sicily. This marriage not only solidified his roots, but also expanded his criminal connections. The turning point in Russell Buffalino's criminal career came with the infamous Appalachian meeting of 1957. This secret gathering of prominent mob figures from across the United States was convened to discuss the future of organized crime and its various enterprises. The meeting was held at the country estate of Joseph Barbera in Appalachian, New York. However, the meeting's secrecy was shattered when law enforcement agencies, tipped off to the unusual gathering, set up roadblocks to intercept attendees. Chaos ensued as some mafiosi tried to flee the scene while others were captured. This event served as a watershed moment, dispelling myths and misconceptions about the existence and organization of the Italian Mafia, unveiling its vast interconnected network spanning from family to family and city to city. Russell Buffalino played a crucial role in organizing the Appalachian meeting, and while it ended in disarray, it exposed the true scale and structure of organized crime in the United States. Now, before we continue with our video, please take a second and give us a like, hit that subscription button, and that notification bell so you can stay updated when new stuff lands. We greatly appreciate it because it helps our content reach more viewers just like you. Thank you. Russell Buffalino's influence extended beyond the criminal underworld. It reached deep into the labor unions too, most notably the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. His connection with Jimmy Hoffa, a rising star within the union, was instrumental in consolidating his power. Hoffa, a tenacious and charismatic union organizer, came to prominence in the early 1930s. His efforts to improve working conditions and fair treatment of employees caught the attention of the Teamsters, leading to his ascent to the Detroit Teamsters Local 299. It was during this time that Hoffa crossed paths with William Buffalino, an American attorney and cousin of Russell who had ties to organized crime. The union activities of Jimmy Hoffa provided an opportunity for Russell Buffalino and his associates to exert their influence. They used their connections to ensure that their interests were protected within the labor unions. This partnership between Hoffa and Buffalino was not just about the labor movement, but also had far-reaching implications, including allegations of CIA involvement in covert operations. 
Despite his substantial influence, Russell Bufalino maintained a low-profile lifestyle. He lived in a simple ranch-style home, dressed casually, drove an older vehicle, and often relied on others for transportation due to his cataract issues. This unassuming facade belied his far-reaching influence in the criminal world. Russell's operation spanned various criminal activities, including labor racketeering and the garment industry. He owned numerous garment companies, producing clothing that was sent to New York and sold to major department store chains. His connections in the labor unions ensured that his interests were protected and that he could maintain control over these enterprises. Russell's network extended beyond his immediate family, and he cultivated relationships with other organized crime leaders, most notably Angelo Bruno, the head of the Philadelphia crime family. These associations further solidified his position and reach within the criminal underworld. Russell Bufalino was not immune to the law's scrutiny. In the mid-1950s, the FBI began closely monitoring his activities. Agents tracked him to various hangouts, including the Imperial Pool Room in Pittston and an office near the Marks Bus Terminal in Scranton. They even followed him on his trips to New York City. One notable legal battle involved extortion charges stemming from Russell's threat to kill Jack Napoli, a jeweler who owed a substantial debt. Napoli had used Russell's name to purchase $25,000 worth of diamonds, and when the check bounced, tensions escalated. Napoli sought protection from the FBI, and this led to Russell's conviction in a four-year prison sentence. However, even behind bars, Russell remained influential, orchestrating criminal activities and maintaining his grip on power. One of the most enduring mysteries in the criminal world is the disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa, a figure closely tied to Russell Bufalino. In the late 1970s, Hoffa vanished without a trace, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and conspiracy theories. Frank Sheeran, a trusted associate of both Hoffa and Bufalino, claimed responsibility for Hoffa's murder. However, the bloodstains found in the Detroit house where Sheeran alleged the murder took place did not match Hoffa's DNA, adding another layer of intrigue to the case. Russell Bufalino's criminal career continued into the late 20th century. In 1977, he was indicted on extortion charges related to threats against Jack Napoli. The trial revealed the extent of his influence and involvement in criminal activities. Despite his conviction and imprisonment, he remained a force to be reckoned with. In 1989, Russell Bufalino was released from prison, and the operations of the Northeastern family were handed over to William Big Billy Delia. Russell continued to exert his influence from the shadows until his death in 1994 at the age of 90. His story serves as a window into a world that operates beyond the boundaries of the law, where secrecy and manipulation reign supreme, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of organized crime history. Hey, if you liked the video, please make sure to like it and don't forget to comment down below which crime activity you'd like us to talk about next. So until next time, Thank you for choosing to spend your time with us today. We'll see you in our next video.